Well, good evening. You may not see me, but then again, you may see me pop up at some point. I'm coming to you live tonight to help you find the replacement app for the one that our church had uh, past few years. The developers of it let us know last year that Apple had changed its policies and that they could no longer have independent apps for every church the way that they were doing it. So they created an opportunity for us to have a kind of a container app so that all of the churches that used the app could actually have the same app with one developer and we would have individual content for our particular app. Now the name of the app is the Nazarene Connect app and you go into your app store and since I and my wife both have iPhones, we obviously go to the Apple store and search for Nazarene Connect. When you find the Nazarene Connect, it says get. So you click on that. It will download the app to your phone. I'm not sure how it works for an Android, but if you have an Android device, it'll be a similar process for all of these things. It's just however you install for an Android app instead of an Apple app. Now, this is a screenshot, and I'm, I'm gonna walk you through screenshots for pretty much the whole app. And then I wanted to do this tonight so that if people wanna get it while they have time, they can look at it, they can kind of work with it. We're gonna have live broadcast tomorrow night. And if anybody has questions, that'll give them a chance that they can share those questions and we'll try to answer those questions tomorrow night for any of the content or anything that you might be having trouble with. So once you get this app downloaded and installed, you click on it to open it, and it's gonna give you this screen. It says, do you wanna to connect to a church or ministry? Now this is where the ch big change is that we didn't have to do this before. It was our own app. Now then we're in this app and there are hundreds of churches that have the same app that if you wanted to connect to any of those churches, you could connect to any of those churches instead. You connect to one church for each app. That way you have the content and, and you'll understand as we go through it why it's important to connect to one particular church. Now, when you tell it yes, that you want to connect to a church, it will give you a screen that says select church or ministry. You'll have the little search box across there. And if you type in Centralia, the Centralia First Church of the Nazarene is the only one that comes up when you search for Centralia. So when you tell it Centralia and you click on that ministry, it will ask you, are you sure you want to pick this church? You tell it yes. Unless you don't want our app, then you can tell it no and you can choose a different church if you want to connect to a different church. But for the sake of argument, since it's you're watching the church's live Facebook feed, I'm hoping you're wanting to connect with us to the point that you would want our content in the app. So tell it yes, and then it will ask you if you wanna sign up, you actually can have an option of going through and using the app, but it won't be personalized at this point if you don't have a, an account set up. It's pretty basic information, your name, age, what language. If you go on down, there are other pieces of information that it asks for, and you sign up at that point, this is my particular login screen. Put in my email, my password, connect, um, you agree to the pot privacy policy. If you wanna look on it and see what the privacy policy says, you click on that little link. If you are like me, it's pretty basic. I trust them, so I didn't read the whole thing. But if you wanna read it all, it's right there. Once you click agree on there, it'll take you back to that other screen and then you can sign in. Once you're signed up, or as you're signing up, at some point in this process, and I'm not sure exactly where it is in the setup, it will ask you if you want it to send you notifications. Now, the thing about having these push notifications sent 
is there are some specific features in this version of the app that are meant to have ingoing, ongoing communication within the church. And so I would recommend that you give it allow, tell it yes, that you have the desire to give the, the notifications. What that is going to do is it will give you a signal when you go to your home screen, like on an iPhone, there is the home screen, it goes dark, it locks. When there's a push notification, it pops up on there and it tells us, tells me that that is there before I ever open my phone or go into the phone and see all of the other stuff that is typical when you open and unlock your phone. So that push notification just alerts you to the fact that there's something there in the app for you. So you can either allow or not allow it, depending on if you want to be notified or not. Now, once you get past all of the setup, you come in and this is your home page. Well, the home page has several different things on it. And so I've done this in sections and I'm going to show you what each section does and then kind of tie it all together at the end. Now, as before, you can have your own personal scriptures every day. And that's in this personal scripture section up here. As you're setting it up, it's gonna ask you if you wanna go through and do the survey like you did before to set your own um, personalized scriptures for each day. And if you tell it yes, and you go through it and you fill out the survey, it will continue to give you personalized content. And so the first section here, my personal scriptures, this is what it will do. This is for mine. And this was interesting because I was working on something that I really messed up and was working through it today. And this popped up while I'm sitting here looking at the other stuff I was working on. This pops up and it talks about how that God sent our Paul sent Timothy to help not be afraid, not to be shaken. And it was just it was extremely timely for me when that popped up on my phone today. So that personalized scripture down at the bottom of that, you see adjust my personal scriptures. You can go in, you can change it if you wanted to tell you scriptures, give you scriptures about a specific topic or a specific concern that you're dealing with at a given time. You can adjust it there. You can tell it what topics and it will pull scriptures from the Bible for you at that point. Now, up in the left corner, you see the little circle that says Centralia Church of the Nazarene. To get back to the home page, all you have to do is click on that circle at any point that you see it on the, the app, anywhere, any page. Just click on that and it'll take you back to the home screen. Now, the second one of those tabs that I showed was the tracks and content tab. We had this before, but it was much more limited in what we had the ability to do. This time, the app has already got, um, I think there are over 1700 tracks that have already been developed that we have access to be able to use at any point throughout this. We can, I, I will be able to, moderate it and I'll be able to adjust it and I'll be able to create new tracks. I'll be able to pull information, new tracks with that. And so if you click on all tracks up at the top there, it will give you all of the tracks that are listed for our church. Some that I have set it up for now, John Wesley's Theology, that one, it's one track a day. I believe that one's pretty much audio and it will play a segment about John Wesley's theology. The worship tracks, when they created it, they set it up so that it dumps all the content at one time. And so it has a specific um, setting in there and I can't adjust it because I didn't create it. But that particular one, there are like 11 or 12 different worship songs that it has videos for. You can click on it and have worship music at hand at any moment. Then there are all these others and I have created in this a series of different track listings, general tracks, tracks in Spanish, marriage and family life. And so you can choose any one of those sections if you want to go to it specifically. 
or you can just scroll down through the general tracks. You can sign up for as many or as few as you want. And as soon as you get to that point, it'll continue to give you that information. With push notifications, it will remind you, it'll send you these informations. You can set the times for your reminders. You can set the times that it pushes things out to you. You can adjust a lot of those different settings and you'll have to play around with that to see how you want it to work for you specifically. So let's go back to the home page. The next two sections there, praying for one another and messages, are some of the really powerful new features that we have in this version of the app. When you click on praying for one another, it will pop up with this screen. Now, this screen actually can be sorted by the number of our all prayer requests, my prayer requests, ones that I have given, and stuff that I am praying for. And so you can have that to sort what the prayer requests are. But this is the thing that's really incredible. When you click on the little plus sign down in the lower right hand corner, it takes you to this screen. On this screen, it has you have the ability as a user to send a prayer request out automatically to everybody on the church's app. This is only sent to the people on our app. This is the reason why you choose a specific ministry to connect to is this and the messaging feature I'll talk about in a minute. This goes to our group of people that are affiliated with the Centralia Church of the Nazarene. Nobody else will see it outside of our group, but the people within the church, you can put that in there. What are you praying for, praying about? This drop down menu, you can scroll down, you can put what you want in there. And if there's not a category that you want in most of those situations, you simply tell it an other. You have to fill in the for, the about, the verse category, and the prayer subject. And then you can fill in any details that you want to. Now, down at the bottom, it says post. When you hit post, it goes live. And everybody with the app, if they have push notifications, I believe it will tell you that it has a new prayer request. If you don't have push notifications turned on, you have to go into the app and then go look at the prayer section and you'll see them there because they're, it's going to constantly be there. It's just whether or not you are notified about the, what's come up. Now, the other portion that I talked about a second ago was the message center. On this message center, I now have the ability to send out messages to all of everybody that is connected with the app. In those messages, I have the ability to link videos or audio files. I can send messages in text form. I can send images. It has so many different features built into this messaging service. And again, you can click on that all messages up there and it will show you all messages, new messages, messages that you have viewed, and you can see which ones you want to look at and it will take that in that situation. Now, when we have bad weather and we have to dismiss church or when we have the coronavirus and we have to dismiss church last minute, we can send a message out through this. Everybody with the app will be notified at the time that that message is there, we can send a delayed message so that if we want to send a reminder on Saturday about something, this would work especially well like for our youth group. If the youth group wants to get this app and it's a free app, they would have it set up. It would replace Facebook Messenger that we could send messages and reminders to them and use that. All you got to do is let me know what the message is that you want sent and I can send it. I don't know if anybody can write a message. I don't think that anybody but the administrator can write a message for it. That's the way that I understand it. But if there's a change in that, I can definitely let you know that. So back to the home screen, the next portions down there, online giving and sermons and studies. Now, up to this point, before the COVID-19, we did not have online giving available. We're working, we've got that up, it's going now. It is through a website, website called tithe.ly. When you click on that, it takes you to the Tithely website. 
if you have created a Tithely account, all you have to do is log into your account, tell how much you want to give, and you follow through, and it will let you donate money to the church through that app. You don't have to go out and find that link on Facebook. You don't have to go anywhere else. All you got to do is click on online giving, and it will take you directly to our account page on Tithely so that you can definitely make sure that the money goes into the church's account. Now then, this is an off-app site. So if you get to this point, if you've donated and you want to go back to your app, all you do is you click up in the corner, in the left corner, it says Nazarene Connect. You click on that and it'll take you back to the app. Then the messages, the studies and sermons portion of the homepage, we have a, a Facebook or this is YouTube, actually. I, I have a YouTube channel set up where I'm hosting all of the different sermons and studies that we're recording. I have that set up right now so that it can link directly to that channel on the church's YouTube channel. So all of the studies and sermons that we have recorded and are there, all you got to do is scroll down that list and you can choose what you want to be able to view. So if you missed a sermon two weeks ago and you know what date it was, you can look down through there and you can see which one it is. I'm trying to, to change the way that I'm naming them so that you actually have a date associated with it so that that will be something that you can track down if you know what date you missed. Again, this is an off app site. So you click back on the Nazarene Connect up in the corner and it takes you back to the app. Go back to the home screen and then you have the calendar feature. And then there's a favorites section. Now then, the calendar feature, I can actually go in and I can list all of our calendar activities that we have coming up so that you can have all of that information on an ongoing basis and know exactly what is coming up at the church. So if you didn't see the bulletin, if you forgot what's in the bulletin, this is a place where we can put all of that information in on a continual basis and have that right in front of us as we're going along as you're using the app. Then the other one, that one there, was the share or the favorites tab. Throughout these different areas on your, your scriptures or your tracks, you can click to favorite it down at the bottom. And like this one, it has nine favorites. This is one that I looked at in one of the tracks. I clicked on favorite so that I knew that it was one that I had done it put it in my favorites. So now then all of the different things that I have seen, all of the different tracks, all of the different verses, any of those things that I want to do, I can go in here and I can have them all collected in one place. And so all of this availability is now here with this app. It is the Nazarene Connect app and it is a free app for anyone who would like to download it. So I wanted to make this as a video for Facebook Live so that you could have access. You can now, it'll be recorded. If you get the app and you have a question, you can go back and rewatch this. If it doesn't answer a question that you might have, all you gotta do is send me a message, text me, email me, whatever, and I will do my best to answer it for you. So all of that being said, that, is what I wanted to share with you this evening. And it's a, a pretty incredible app, especially for free. It gives us a lot of ability to communicate with one another. And I hope that as many of you as possible would take advantage of it. Now, if you had the old church app, I do not know, but I believe you can sign in with those credentials if you remember what they are. If you do not remember what they are, but you have the same email address that you're trying to sign up again, you can go in and you can ask for it to send you the password and you can reset your password from that sign in page. Or you could just sign up with a new email address and a new account and go from there. So hopefully that answers all of your questions. And I hope that as many of you as possible could go in and get this app. I think you will find it a very useful app. And I think that it will be something that will greatly benefit us going forward. I will leave you now and I will hopefully talk with all of you tomorrow evening. May God bless you and keep you. Good night.